Welcome to our third video in this series about how to get trans-related healthcare covered under insurance. If you haven't had a chance to watch the first two videos, please go check them out now. In the first video, we went over how to track down your particular insurance plan and figure out what it covers. In the second video, we went over how to apply for coverage and how to know what your out-of-pocket costs will be. In this video, we'll give you some examples of people who have successfully gotten insurance coverage for trans-related care. We'll describe what happens during the appeals process, and we'll also go over what it looks like if you want to challenge an explicit exclusion in an employer-based plan. To kick things off, I want to introduce you to another colleague at Transcend Legal, Patricia Harrington. Hi, my name is Patricia. I work with Noah and Charlie at Transcend Legal. Prior to that, I spent several years as the intake coordinator at the Transgender Legal Defense and Education Fund. During that time, I fielded many phone calls from trans people seeking assistance accessing trans health care and insurance coverage for that care. One call I received really stood out. The caller was completely despondent, almost suicidal, because she felt that she could never get the medically necessary treatment she needed. I asked her if she had health insurance. She said she had employer-provided health insurance. I asked her who her employer was, and she said that she worked for a major airline. I knew that this particular airline provided health insurance with coverage for transgender health care. In fact, this airline was known for generous health care coverage. I told the caller that her employer provided health insurance might cover her care. I asked her to check with her human resources department and see what her options were. The next day, she called back a completely different person. She had contacted her human resources department and learned that not only would her surgery be covered, but the plan also provided a transportation allowance for travel to a surgery in another part of the country. She was ecstatic and couldn't thank me enough. In fact, all I did was prompt her to take that first step and not assume that the situation was hopeless. I'd like to encourage you not to assume that your health care will be denied. Sometimes taking the first step is the most important thing that you can do. So I hope by now that you've been able to get a copy of your plan booklet and your insurance company's medical policy and are ready to start trying to get the health care you deserve. Not all insurance cases are going to be that easy. If there's an explicit exclusion in your plan, or your pre-authorization or your claim has been denied, you may need legal assistance to help you get the coverage that you need. Hi, I'm Charlie Arrowwood, an attorney at Transcend Legal. I help trans people appeal insurance denials. Several months ago, a family was referred to us because their 16-year-old son's top surgery was denied. Their self-funded, employer-based health plan covered trans health care, but the insurance company's medical policy had a requirement that the person be at least 18 years old to undergo surgery. Just before the scheduled surgery date, he received a denial of pre-authorization on the basis that he wasn't 18. He was devastated and his mother was concerned that he would not be able to wait until his 18th birthday to have surgery. We gathered his medical records and got additional letters of support from his providers. We pulled together all of the medical evidence saying that top surgery in people under 18 is the standard of care and is safe and effective. We also explained why it's unlawful discrimination to deny this medically necessary treatment. The insurance company denied the first level appeal. As part of the first level appeal, the insurance company had their own doctor engage in a peer-to-peer -peer review with the surgeon in order to issue an opinion on whether the procedure was medically necessary. But their doctor had never dealt with transgender patients at all, let alone a transgender adolescent. They had offered no justification for why 18 was the magic number and we had clearly shown that it was not. We submitted a second level appeal with some additional information, including a supporting letter from the main author of the most recent, most relevant study on the topic. The day we were scheduled to do a phone hearing with the insurance company, they called to let us know that our second level appeal was successful. They had reversed their decision based on the evidence we had submitted and the young man's surgery would be covered. We work with people all across the country, so we aren't always able to meet people in person. But in this case, a few days after we found out about that decision, we were able to meet the young man and his mom at the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference. You could tell they were both finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. Most people will look at a medical policy that says you have to be 18 and assume that's the end of the story. But an insurance company's decision has to be based on current medical standards, and most of the written policies have outdated or just plain false requirements. Many medical policies categorize all facial surgery and breast augmentation for trans women and nipple reconstruction for trans men as cosmetic. 
When insurance companies are denying claims unfairly, it's possible to put up a fight, and as this story demonstrates, those fights can be successful. We can't guarantee success in every case, but if you just stop at the first potential roadblock, you definitely won't get coverage. So now we're going to go over the appeals process and some pitfalls to watch out for. First, you want to understand what type of appeals are available to you. Your plan booklet will have a section explaining how to appeal a denial of coverage, and there should be information about it in the denial letter itself. The exact procedure will differ depending on your type of plan and the insurance company, but generally there will be one or two levels of internal appeal, meaning the insurance company itself re-reviews the claim. Then oftentimes an external appeal is possible. That means you submit the information to an independent review body that makes the decision, not the insurance company. If you have Medicaid or Medicare, there's also a fair hearing process that you can go through. Oftentimes internal appeals are not successful. You're simply re-asking the insurance company to cover the procedure and they are basing their decision on the same policy that led them to deny coverage in the first place. If your plan has a trans exclusion or the insurance company deems your procedure cosmetic, then the insurance company has little incentive at this point to change their decision, but sometimes they do. So you resubmit the documentation you submitted in the first place, plus anything that may have been missing. It's also helpful to have your providers write letters specifically in support of the appeal. When we at Transcend Legal Assist People, we compile and submit extensive medical evidence about the medical necessity of the procedure at issue. If your internal appeals are denied, you can move on to the external appeal, if you have one available to you. The external appeal does not always succeed, but it is more likely to. You will submit your evidence of medical necessity to an external independent body that will assess whether or not the insurance company made the correct decision. The external appeal can overturn a denial and it is binding on the insurance company. Next, it's important to be aware of the deadline to appeal a denial. Make sure to check the deadlines for your plan because if you miss them, you may lose the opportunity to challenge your denial. And if you've already paid out of pocket, there are also deadlines to file a claim. So look in your plan booklet to find out how quickly you must submit your claim. It's important that your appeal is thorough and timely. If you've already had surgery, you don't want to mess up your appeals because you only have a certain number of them. Additionally, if you don't submit the proper information during the appeals process, it's hard to come back later and fix that. By not doing the appeals process properly, you might be forfeiting your rights later on. For most insurance companies, you can initiate an appeal simply by calling on the phone. You do not want to do this. When you're calling the insurance company to ask about a denial, be careful that you don't inadvertently initiate an appeal. If you initiate an appeal by phone, they may make a decision without you having provided any additional information. That's like throwing away an appeal. Done properly and under the right circumstances, the internal and external appeal processes are the right remedies and will get you the coverage you need. But if you have a self-funded, employer-based plan or a Medicaid plan with an exclusion, you'll probably need to enlist some outside help to succeed because the way to challenge those denials is usually through filing a charge of discrimination with the appropriate government agency or by filing a lawsuit in court. The case Charlie described at the beginning was an appeal with an insurance company. Another type of case we work on is one where there's an explicit exclusion in a self-funded employer health plan. As we described in the first video, that's where the employer is responsible for the terms of the health plan and has the power to remove the exclusion. In order to assert your rights under the plan, it does mean that you have to explain to your employer that they are engaging in unfair discrimination. While it is unlawful to fire someone for reporting discrimination, Retaliation is a concern, so you might want to speak with an attorney before approaching your employer about this issue. But it is generally a good idea to let the Human Resources Department know that you are being denied health care under the plan and ask them to remove the exclusion. You would be surprised at the number of employers who will take action on this once the issue is brought to their attention. Someone who filled out our survey on issues people are having accessing trans health care under insurance wrote that there was an exclusion in his self-funded employer plan. He wrote, I am desperate to have top surgery because the dysphoria is so bad. How am I supposed to figure all of this out when there are days I can barely get out of bed in the morning because my depression just gets worse? Because of the urgency in his request, I reached out to him right away. I explained that the exclusion was unlawful. He was prepared to enlist our help but had not yet approached his employer directly, so he wanted to do that first. 
Just six weeks later, he wrote back saying that shortly after we spoke, he decided to email his supervisor. The supervisor put him in touch with the right person who said she would do some research and get back to him. Eventually, she called him to let him know that they would be removing the exclusion effective January 1st. But if you've already approached Human Resources and they say they're not going to get rid of the exclusion, then your next step might be getting an attorney to write a letter on your behalf. This is known as a demand letter. The letter would explain why it's unlawful for them to have an exclusion. In many instances, this letter alone is sufficient to get the employer to change the policy or at the very least pay for your surgery. If the letter doesn't work, the next step would be to file a charge of discrimination with the Federal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or EEOC. In rare cases, you might actually have to file a lawsuit before the employer will agree to change the policy. But in our experience, and in the experience of many other organizations, most of these cases are resolved without going to court. So now, maybe you're thinking that this sounds like a lot of work and you're wondering if it would work for you. Without looking at your specific situation, we're not able to say what might work for you. But there is one thing we can say with certainty. If you don't investigate and try to get coverage, you're definitely not going to get coverage. So what do you have to lose? When approaching insurance issues, you want to approach the situation optimistically but realistically. These are for-profit companies that make money by collecting premiums and not paying out claims. These companies generally don't do the right thing simply because you ask them once. It's a process and takes time. In many situations, getting a denial is to be expected. It's just a bump in the road on your way to getting your surgery. I spend every day dealing with insurance companies and employers that have exclusions. You wouldn't believe the kinds of things that insurance companies try to pull. Whether it's intentional or just incompetence, they definitely don't make it easy to get coverage. The state of California, for example, fined insurer HealthNet $200,000 for violating non-discrimination laws by repeatedly denying coverage to patients who sought trans-related care. Insurance companies rely on denying claims and knowing that many people simply won't stand up for themselves and fight the denials. Don't be one of those people who just lets a big corporation or government treat you unfairly. I cannot guarantee it will work for everyone, or you, but I wouldn't be devoting my life right now to battling insurance companies if I weren't seeing results. Now, we've explained the basics of how to know what your plan covers, how to apply for coverage, and what to do if you're denied. Hopefully for many people, the information we've already given you will be enough to get your coverage. But at this point, you may have done the research about your plan and know that you are not able to move forward without some legal assistance. Or you may know what steps you need to take, but want to make sure you're doing them correctly. If you think you need legal assistance, stay tuned for our next video, where you can find out how Transcend Legal might be able to help you get the health care that you need. Thanks for watching. If you found these stories inspiring, please share this video with someone you know who may need coverage so that they can take the next step towards getting the health care that they deserve.